this video, we're going to be talking about the law of large numbers. And to best explain the law of large numbers, I have with me a US quarter. But this isn't just any US quarter. This is the one from South Dakota. Now, interestingly enough, this specific quarter will land on heads 80% of the time. And to show you that this is actually the case, I'm going to flip this coin five times. And I'm going to show you that well, roughly four of them are going to be heads, and one of them will be tails. So let's see if that's the, actually the case. Uh, the first one I got was tails. Flip the coin again. Yeah, it's a crazy coin. It's a heads. Next one. Heads. Next one, heads. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Next one. Heads again. So look at that. You should be absolutely convinced that the South Dakota uh, US quarter will land on heads 80% of the time. Now you should be skeptical, and I hope you are, because you might be saying, eh, five experiments here, kind of not enough. I wanna see more. I want you to keep doing this and let's see what actually happens here. And I, I, I'll give you this point. I'm actually going to flip the coin another five times and I'm going to record the results. So I got tails, 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 <laughs> yikes, okay, tails, um, that's awkward. <laughs> That, that seems kind of rare. Maybe I, I just need to... Uh, what do you think I would need to do here to justify my claim that it's going to land on heads 80% of the time? And this is actually the mentality of what the law of large numbers states. This is a regular fair-sided coin. It's going to land on heads 50% uh, of the time. But that's actually also not true. <laughs> because... No coin is perfectly fair. In fact, studies have shown that with U.S. quarters, they will land on heads about 51% of the time. Now, I'm not trying to say I lied to you, even though I technically did. Uh, I tricked you. <laughs> That's my justification. That's my moral justification. But here's the idea that if I were to make a claim about a certain probability, then any experiment would eventually prove my case in the long run. And that's what the law of large numbers states, that if I were to flip this coin over and over and over again, the, prob the, the relative frequency of landing a heads should get closer and closer to 80%. And so my first five were maybe out of luck. Maybe these uh, next five are also kind of out of luck. Now, if you notice here real quick, the number of tails is 60%, 60% tails, and only 40% heads. So my next claim now, if I were to be a true scientist, would be that this coin lands on tails 60% of the time. And I hate to say it, but you've never flipped a South Dakota coin probably, or you probably don't remember what you flipped when, the last time you flipped a South Dakota uh, US quarter. Um, so this is actually the best probability that you should believe in because I just conducted this experiment. Uh, but if I were to keep flipping this quarter over and over again, you're actually going to notice that the relative frequency of tails is going to tend closer and closer to about 49%. And so that's what the law of large numbers states, that as the, as the number of experiments increases, the relative frequency of a certain outcome will tend closer and closer to the true theoretical probability. Now, that being said, I do want to talk about subjective probability and objective probability. Objective probability is basically the, the, the theoretical probability assigned according to the law of large numbers. So in this case, it would be 51% heads, 49% tails. However, you can consider subjective probability, which is the probability that you assign thing, uh, certain events. So for example, when I first started this video, you probably assumed that this quarter was a fair-sided die. Uh, excuse me, fair-sided quarter. And you would probably assume that 50% uh, of the time it's going to land on heads, 50% of the time it's going to land on tails. 
But the only reason that's the case is because that's what all the teachers told you. That's what all the other quarters have done. That's what all the other pennies have done and the nickels and so forth. And so you're using your subjectivity to assign a specific uh, probability to certain events. And that's okay. You're allowed to do that. And you should live your life using subjective probability because technically that's all what we're using anyways. I mean, think about it. To show that the this coin will land on a, uh, on a heads 51% of the time, I would have to keep flipping over and over and over again. And technically, I would need to flip the coin infinitely many times. And that's not possible. And therefore, I actually don't know the probability of anything. Because I would have to repeat the event all over, over and over again. And I'm specifically referring to non-zero or non-100 um, uh, probabilities. So anything that is likely, anything that we can test with an experiment, it's really impossible to tell what the, the probability of that event is exactly. But that being said, the benefit of the law of large numbers says that if you test it large, many times, after many, many, many times, as you get, uh, as you increase the number of experiments, you should get closer and closer to the truth. And that's still slightly beneficial to science. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video.